Hello everyone and welcome to the NARSA weekly update for week commencing Monday, March the 22nd, 2021. It's Gary Gillen here and I'm your host for this week's edition and I hope that everyone is doing exceptionally well and has been continuing to bask in the glories of being unbeaten champions of Scotland for season 2020-2021. It's been such a great experience for us and everyone connected with the club this past wee while, and long may it continue. I will never, ever, ever tire of it. Ever. So, first things first for this week, the game segment of our content last week saw us play two very important and intense games that both provided a drama for us and and a little bit of understanding truly of where our team are at right now and uh, that's specific to the the unfortunate situation that we had on Thursday where we got put out of Europe at the last 16 stage for the second successive year that game was the Europa League tie against Slavia Prague at Ibrox, which saw us fall just a little bit short in our quest to make it to the last eight with a 2-0 defeat, including two red cards for Kamar Roof and Leon Balogun, and oof, Roof's red card was most certainly well-deserved after a horrendous challenge, and I'm just glad that uh, both he and the goalie were truly focused on the ball through the whole episode which led to Roof, you know, almost decapitating the poor goalie and bursting his face wide open. It was just awful to see. But I think the fact that they weren't conscious of each other being close to each other, they were concentrating on the ball, I think that maybe helped curtail the injuries sustained by the goalie, um, such as they were. It was just awful to see, though. And then I hope the goalie makes a proper recovery. And he saw red. The game was kind of done at that point. Balogun's red... I felt at the time and since then was was really unlucky for him uh, personally. His first yellow stemmed from Scott Arfield not basically being able to keep pace with their player, kind of tracking back, then just kind of giving him a nudge towards Balogun, who was then somewhat forced into fouling the guy to get his first yellow card. He did walk a bit of a tightrope after that, which was kind of precarious and a little bit stressful to watch. And then his second was from a silly mistake from a, a, a very unusually hesitant and pretty pretty much error-prone Connor Goldson, where he basically made another mistake in defence, which led to Balogun being forced into a bit of a desperate challenge, which got him his second yellow and, of course, his red. So then, of course, they go and score with a brilliant free kick directly from said free kick. And we're now two goals and two men, two goals down and two men down. And the tie is is effectively over. But, you know, but back to the first goal that we lost the, the in Canada here. I'm based in Calgary in Canada, for those that don't know. And the, the, we have it on DAZN. We have the Europa League matches on DAZN. And the DAZN commentator uh, kept making reference. He does, I don't think he likes Rangers that much and so much so that he gets turned way down whenever whenever Rangers are playing because he's just annoying. And he kept making reference to the fact that McGregor got beat at his front post for the first goal. To be dead honest, I thought the, the fellow who scored scored an absolutely brilliant goal, ghosting in from, from what appeared to be nowhere and striking his header so cleanly and with such force that it would have taken another world, world, worldly save from McGregor to keep it out. I, you know, I truly don't subscribe to the a goalie should never ever get beat at his near post, regardless of the circumstances philosophy. It's not quite as absolute as that, I don't think. Not not in, in games, and, and and it was a great header, it was a, a great cross. My only real critique of, of that particular goal was the fellow was given way too much time to cross it um, for, for the guy to head it in. And, and that was a little bit of a feature on Sunday's game as well. A ball in from their left-hand side and a bit of an, an easy header. So uh, the second game, of course, was yesterday's 1-1 draw with Celtic at Sharkhead. And it wasn't the most intense old firm game, nor was it really truly filled with any drama and or sustained action. Uh, well... Uh, apart from Edward's dive, that was apparently the most stonewall penalty that you would ever see, which he got booked for for simulation, which subsequently, or ironically, I should say, wasn't even as bad as the dive he did in the second half, which should have merited a second yellow and uh, therefore a red card, both for blatantly cheating 
but who am I to judge? I'm not a qualified referee and I'm sure he saw what he saw. Just incredible that they would come out and complain about that stonewall and in inverted commas penalty in the first half. It was never a penalty in a million years. But again, as I mentioned there a wee bit earlier, we did lose another poor goal, another cross from their left-hand side and an easy header that goes in. Two similar uh, type or styles of, of goals lost under very similar circumstances and I'm sure that the coaching staff will will be very well aware of that and will be all over it during the, the break that we have here for the international games to, to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Things did prove on a, improve, sorry, I should say, on our right-hand side when Patterson did come on early in the second half and, and he commanded his area and did his job very, very well again. You know, Balligan, in respect to him, he did his best and let's not forget that he gets an assist for Alfie's goal to... However, he's just not a natural right back and, and you can see it as clear as day and you can see what, what Celtic were doing when he was there as well. I also spoke to my dad a wee bit earlier today and he had said that one of the, I don't know if it was one of the Sky commentators or someone that commented on the game that when Balogun had walked past them at half time, he was breathing very, very, very heavy as if he was absolutely exhausted. So it takes a lot of effort to, to do a job that you're maybe not accustomed to. And, and I think that Stevie G did the right thing by giving him a wee spell at the start of the second half and then getting on our more natural right back. So as if we honestly needed reminding of how important our captain is to us, we simply just weren't losing goals like that when he was in the team. End of story. In terms of overall performance, the, the team to me, looked physically and emotionally spent. From all of the drama, you know, the, the, the result, of course, and the effort put into trying to get the result that we were hoping for to take us to the last eight. Um, but the, you know, the emotion after, uh, or the, the whole uh, racial abuse incident and then fallout from that, I, I have to think, it would have taken its, its toll then and a wee bit more about that later on when we get to the communication section. But the good news is, as I mentioned, we do have two weeks off for the international break. Not every player, of course, will have two weeks off because we do have a lot of internationals in our team now. And then we have the Cove Rangers Scottish Cup tie to, to look forward to and, uh, and give us a final push towards Scottish Cup glory because... That's, that's the big um, blot in the copybook for Stephen Gerrard and his management team is that we just haven't done well enough in cup competitions at all since he arrived. You know, we did have a very good showing in December 2019 for the League Cup final, which we got, you know, got taken away with the, with the offside goal that Celtic were given. But, you know, we still need to we still need to end the season with a Scottish Cup win if we can. And of course, all that means to say that we are still unbeaten after 33 games. You know, as I said last week, I, I just want to reiterate, like, let's not underestimate how far we've progressed as a team and a club uh, under, under the current management structure and team. And I, and I mean that at every level of the club. It's, it's absolutely astonishing how far we've come. And it honestly just feels like we're a proper football club again, and and I won't tire of saying that. It's, it's it's a great platform to have. It's it's great to to have the the, the same players who were criticised so heavily in the previous two seasons for bottling it or tiring too readily or whatever other um, accusations were thrown their way. <coughs> excuse me, for them to actually improve and get better and and live through some trials and tribulations to get to a spot where they're actually genuinely bona fide champions and winners. It's great. And I definitely hope it bodes as well for the remaining games of the season. And as I say, it gets us that league and cup double, which would be very, very pleasant. So no games to discuss for this upcoming week for the international break. And our next game is the Scottish Cup tie against Cove Rangers. And it will be on the weekend of April the 3rd or the 4th. But the date and time still hasn't been confirmed just yet. And as soon as it is, you, you no doubt you will hear at the same time as I do. But if it's round about uh, weekly update podcast time, I'll certainly let everyone know. And I imagine by this time next week when we're recording that we will know what the date and the time is. I imagine Premium Sports <coughs> will pick up the game because that's the biggest audience that they would they would be likely to get and and it will be hopefully it's not too stupid a kickoff time for for a home match but we'll see we'll see how that goes and today just a wee bit earlier today right now we're recording here just after 7 p.m mountain time 
on Monday evening. And you'll have likely seen today that the last five fixtures, last la last five league fixtures, were confirmed today with a home match against Hibs on Sunday, uh, the eleventh of April at three p.m. UK kickoff time. Then a midweek match away on the eight, sorry, April twenty first, away to St Johnson. And that's a 7.45pm UK kickoff time. Then a home match against Celtic on Sunday the 2nd of May with a noon, oh dear, UK kickoff time. Then a way match, a th the third away match against Livingston of the season on Wednesday, May the 12th at 7.45pm UK. And then our last match, which I imagine would be trophy presentation day, is Saturday the 15th of May at 12.30pm UK time, so another early one there. So, three home matches, three weekend matches, and two midweek matches as well. And just to, to give a bit of a sense of what the remainder of the season looks like, we also know the dates of the Scottish Cup as well. And the third round, as I mentioned earlier, weekend of Saturday, April the 3rd, or Sunday, April the 4th, the, that's the third round. The fourth round will be the weekend of April 17-18. The fifth round, quarterfinals, will be Saturday, the weekend of Saturday, April 24 or 25. And the semifinals, May 8th or 9th. And the final is Saturday the 22nd of May, which is obviously a week after the last game. So just to give you a bit of a sense of what that would look like for Rangers, should we advance against Cove Rangers and make our way to the final, we would have Hibs, then the fourth round the following week, and then a to St Johnson on the Wednesday, and then the fifth round, quarter final, on the Saturday, the 24th of April, then Sunday, the 2nd of May, at home to Celtic, and then the following weekend, the 8th or 9th, would be the semi-final of the Scottish Cup, then away to Livingston on Wednesday the 12th, at home to Aberdeen on the 15th, and then the final on the 22nd of May. Maximum 10 games left for our domestic season, including the Cup, or we will have six left, five games, and if we get sensationally knocked out by Cove Rangers, then that's that done then. So hopefully we have 10 games left to, to really ready and steady our season and wrap it up with a big gigantic red white and blue bow points per game i hear you ask since we actually did have a game that contributed to points per game rangers are now 2.7 points per game that's down 0 0.03 from last week which is basically through rounding and that other mob 2.09 points per game down 0 0.04 from last week as well so just one more regular weekly plug for our RTV vouchers. If you want or need any information on the RTV vouchers, please reach out to your club president or secretary and who will get in contact with me and we will get you sorted out. As I mentioned before, things have went very quiet and it's more maintenance that we're doing now for some vouchers that have expired or are just being a little bit wonky. So I don't anticipate that there would be much of an uptake between now and the end of the season, but we'll see how that goes. So convention update, uh, as you know, we put the hotel rooms out for booking on the morning of Saturday the 13th of March, a week past on Saturday there, and it was sold out and then some by Wednesday the 17th of March, an absolutely incredible level of interest in our first week and and it's, it bodes well. Of course, people are desperate to get a party with fellow bears and we're desperate for something to look forward to. And Vegas is always very, very fun. So what we're in the process of doing right now because of the sellout is working on a modest addendum to the existing contract with Caesars Entertainment. One, to cover the overbookings that have happened. And two, to increase the rooms to accommodate folks who have yet to book. We'll hopefully have that wrapped up. I actually just checked my email not long before we started recording tonight and the addendum is in my inbox. So I'll take a peek at that tonight after I pick Leo up from snowboarding and we will see and get that signed and then hopefully have everything all opened back up again. So if you've tried to book the in the last ooh, 24 to 40 hours or so, you'll likely have seen some sort of notification saying rooms unavailable or something similar like that. So just please stand by, keep your eyes and ears open on our, our social media channels and 
the, the, the further information as soon as we know when it's opened back up again, which I anticipate will be tomorrow or Wednesday at the very latest, then you can get back in there and make your bookings. What we don't want to continue to do is add and add and add and add rooms in perpetuity. I, I imagine we'll plateau at some point and then just leave a wee bit of a cushion there for, for people who make a decision a wee bit closer to the time, appreciating, you know, it's just over 15 months to the event and, and people don't know what the world is going to look like there. We're all taking a leap of faith by booking so early to, to give us truly something to, to look forward to. So really looking forward to getting as many bears as we possibly can down to Las Vegas and the blow the roof right off of Planet Hollywood for our 150th year celebrations. So as I mentioned last week, we will keep everyone posted on when we can expect the event tickets to go on sale. As I mentioned, I think I mentioned last week that I don't think it'll be at some point before April, so don't worry in the next couple of weeks that you'll, you'll miss out anything. We have an, an ARSA executive meeting on the 31st of March, I believe, so probably there we'll, we'll verify and, and confirm the ticket pricing. And then maybe early April we'll get this all organised to get it out there. We're going to do the same again as we've attempted to do for the last a couple of conventions, the San Francisco and Bramley conventions, which was get ourselves organised for electronic booking of tickets as well. You know, so to make it a little bit easier for booking, to make it a little bit easier should you forget your tickets when you're uh, coming up to the security person at the door, and and make it a little bit less admin heavy for us over here on these shores to get tickets to everyone. It's it worked very well. We never got a chance to actually try it out truly at an event, but I'm fairly certain that it'll work out very well for us. So as I say, stay tuned. And then once you have your hotel confirmed and you have your event tickets, we will get the excursions organised with the Las Vegas Loyal folks here over the next few weeks and hopefully get a bit of information out there about those too. And then it's just flights that you need to worry about and spending money of course as well so we're getting there folks uh, very very exciting i'm really looking forward to uh, to getting a little bit more involved in the preparations as we as we move forward as well so from an other business perspective we as you'll as you'll notice if you've been a regular listener to these podcasts we we have been doing a number of features on rangers partners and or official licensees and we're hoping this week to get a chance to chat with some of the folks from nordvpn you might remember i gave a bit of an overview on the nordvpn product and, and what it was they were trying to do with rangers and we're hoping to get some time with them this week to discuss their product set and how it might be of benefit to our membership here in north america and I'm also hopeful, without preempting any of the conversations, that there might be a wee competition prize or two for them to help spread the word over here too. So stay tuned on that, and we'll hopefully be in a position to share more next week about what that's going to look like as we move forward. And on the topic of official Rangers licensees, you'll remember a wee while back again that we did talk about one of the licensees which was the taxi game, the board game, who have a range of specific version for us to, to play and enjoy. You might also remember that they generously donated a prize of a game for a lucky winner over here, and we've been threatening to do a competition for a wee while and haven't quite got round to it yet. What I can tell you is that we will be working that competition through our social media outlets this week, and I'll also make sure that each club's president and secretaries are informed too to try and get as much reach as we can. And as I think I mentioned again before, that we would do, some, we'd do something to be a bit more interactive, you know, answer a trivia question like this, share it and tag someone else, something like that. I know they're a wee bit hokey to do, but it, it helps get spread the word a wee bit as well and then hopefully gives uh, more people an opportunity to, to win the, the game. So... What Gordon did from the, the taxi game was kindly sent over a game for me to try and it arrived late last week. So yesterday, myself and my love Erin and my family, the Careys around the corner here, sat down and played a few games of it over a couple of beers. Well, actually, it's probably a bit more than a couple of beers, to be honest. And after the, the old firm game, and I have to tell you, it was a very, very, very fun game, like everything. It takes a wee bit of getting used to, you know, with the rules and stuff. And that's where Andy's pending, or continued, sorry, uh, sobriety and his repeated patience in explaining the rules when we veered away from them was a, was a godsend <laughs> for us to have an actual proper game. But once we all got into the groove, it was absolutely excellent fun. And within the game, there's two different types of questions, Rangers and general knowledge. 
And you know, I have to say they're not they're not super easy. I mean, I guess like everything, if you know the answer, it's easy. But it, it covers a, a wide wide range of topics, a wide wide range of of eras for Rangers and 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 the, the general knowledge part as well. And it's you know, it is a bit of a challenge. And it was honestly absolutely tremendous for me personally to spend time with. Rangers supporting family and to talk about Rangers and have a laugh and a little bit of friendly uh, competition too. You know, I'm, I'm also very happy to tell you that Team Erin and Gaz won the first game. And we didn't actually try so much after that first game because we all really truly know that the, the winners of the first game is the most important winners. So, so that's something more to be enjoyed. So... Please stay tuned this week and see if you can snag the competition prize. And if you do, I'm absolutely certain that you won't regret it. And if you don't, then I definitely encourage you to go and check it out and maybe grab one for yourself. And, you know, in this day and age of, geez, almost everything being electronic, it was really great just to sit with people that I love and play a board game and interact with with uh, human beings and have a laugh and have some drama and have some great fun. So really, really enjoyed it. We might try and get Gordon on to talk a wee bit more about the the taxi game, maybe in time for next week's pod, if we can, if not, maybe for the following week. But yeah, really, a really unique and and, uh, and fun licensee that we have there for Rangers. And of course, every single game sold directly benefits the club as well. So another reason to get involved if you feel like it. So from a feature segment perspective, last week we did manage to get some time with my new best mate, Davy Robertson, nine in a row legend who walked us through his journey from Aberdeen to Rangers to Leeds to Montrose to Phoenix to Texas and then to his current abode which is in Kashmir in India with Real Kashmir. I had an absolutely brilliant time and it was such a superb experience for me personally to get to talk to one of my heroes that I had when I was growing up and to hear some great stories about his time with us, how he felt, the impacts to his family in Aberdeen when he signed for, for us, which wasn't very pleasant by the way, his insecurities that he had throughout his career, his greatest influences at his time at Rangers and a whole bunch of other stuff. And if you haven't heard the interview, please do check it out. Davy speaks very, very well, has some great stories to share and is truly a very humble, honest and open guy. And it's, you, you never know what you're going to expect. He was a joy to deal with to get the, the interview set up. We had to postpone a couple of times because he had preparation going on for, for crucial playoff games and the playoffs haven't truly worked out And and for the best for, for Real Kashmir, so it doesn't look like they're going to win the championship this year, but they'll they'll regroup and get themselves prepared for next year. But interestingly enough, off camera, he told me that he's been super bored this last wee while because he got a four-game ban. He does mention it in the interview, but in the interview, he, he, he kind of, he just talks about, oh, yeah, so it's a little bit of a misunderstanding, and uh, let's move on and talk about something else. What actually happened? I said, like, what happened? If you don't mind me asking, what happened? He says, oh, it was, a, it was a misunderstanding. His son Mason plays for the team as well. Davy was shouting something from the side. Mason shouted something over at Davy. Davy shouted something back at Mason that I'm assuming wasn't very complimentary. And then the referee thought he was talking to him and he got, you know, sent off and suspended. And he isn't even allowed in the game at the game at all, you know, so the ban is like a, a real genuine expulsion for a period of time. So the, I think the game they were playing, I think he's I think he's going to get into one more game before the end of the season, but you could tell with the results that the team have had that they have suffered when he's not there as well. So his passion and drive and and aggression hasn't left him and it's, and it's brilliant to see. But as I say, you should check it out. A very, very, a very good story. And he does actually have an autobiography coming out as well. I think actually pre-orders are ready in the UK from a week today. I think it's the 29th or maybe it's the 26th. Something like that. But very, very soon as well. So I'm going to try and grab myself a copy of that when it comes out as well. It is a wee bit long. It's about 90 minutes or so. <clears throat> and we did think about doing part one and part two you know, just to give people a wee break, but decided to put it out in its entirety and, you know, if you get the time to, to watch it, even in bits and pieces, that would be, that would be tremendous and I promise you won't be disappointed. From a communications perspective, a couple of things I wanted to mention that came out of the club this past week. Firstly, 
the club's messaging <clears throat> and managing and management, sorry, around our support for fans not to show up at Parkhead for yesterday's game, I thought was very, very well put together. You know, almost I'm assuming almost everyone can appreciate that the club can truly only do so much to encourage supporters to comply with whatever the subject matter is at a given point in time. But the utter nonsense that we faced as a club and support after the 55 celebrations a couple of weeks ago is utterly laughable, as was the media frenzy leading up to, to the weekend's old Firm game. And the club, once again, took a very progressive and, and really proactive approach by engaging with fans' representation and what they called influencers, fan influencers. And, and by that, guys such as Four Lads, Had a Dream blog writer Stevie Clifford and David Edgar uh, from Heart and Hand uh, to help to do two main things. You know, one, to understand the pulse of the fans out there, what's happening in social media, is there anything that's going to be planned? Is there something we should be worried about? You know, and, and you know, just obviously the potential for any silliness related to the game that they could maybe try and proactively get ahead of and, and uh, quash in some way. And the second main reason was to, to use these folks' communications platform as a force for good for the club and to help get the messaging, messaging out to as wide an audience as possible to ensure appropriate behaviour and, and to help protect the best interests of the club by not doing anything unlawful or silly that could put anyone's health at risk by not adhering to the existing COVID restrictive protocols and things like that. So, you know, a really smart and progressive moves by the club. Again, you can just feel the maturity coming out in our communications now. And you saw how it all panned out yesterday with no incidents in or around the Glasgow area that could be used as a, as a negative stick to beat us with. So well done. Again, to everybody in the communications department involved in, in that approach as well. And secondly, I mentioned it a wee bit briefly earlier, and, and most importantly, this is the big one, the club's unequivocal support for Glenn Kamara's horrendous racial ab abuse situation by Slavia Prague's Andre Kudela uh, towards the end of the game on Thursday night. You know, utterly classless act by the player and all the more bizarre when the game is won the game is just you know it's kind of boiling over a wee bit with some silly fouls and stuff but for the game to be completely done 10 minutes from the end and to go and do what he did is just madness utter utter madness and on friday morning i'm sure you've read it but if you forgive me for just reading out and re-emphasizing some of the things that stuart robertson our managing director said and the article says Rangers managing director Stuart Robertson today commented racism is unacceptable in any form and in any setting. The racist abuse suffered by Glenn Kamara will not be tolerated by Rangers. As a club, we stand resolutely behind Glenn as we support him and his teammates. We stand behind each and every one of our players, regardless of race, religion, colour or creed. If you wear the famous blue of Rangers FC, you are one of our own. Everyone, anyone. Several, several of our players have subsequently received racist, threatening and sickening abuse online. You'll see it happen to Alfie again yesterday after, after the game and some teenage clown has been charged with that now. And back to the article. This is abhorrent and once again highlights the responsibility social media outlets have in eradicating abuse from faceless cowards. We refuse to acknowledge any attempt to defend, deflect or deny the abuse Glenn Kamara experienced last night. Our manager Stephen Gerrard has already underlined his own disgust at this incident and support for our players. We can confirm that Stephen, our chairman Douglas Park, sporting director Ross Wilson and I met last night to agree our club stance. We also met with UEFA representatives. The incident has been reported to the UEFA match delegate and we understand that it has formed part of his match report. UEFA will be well aware the world of that the football world is watching. We expect a robust and unequivocal response in relation to this incident. It cannot be merely swept under the carpet. We are not prepared for Glenn Kamara to be yet another statistic. Enough is enough. Brilliantly written and, and there's no mistaking <clears throat> the club's stance on this, which is tremendous. <clears throat> and then couple this with Steven Gerrard's absolutely sensational post-match interview where he just lays it on the line completely from the heart. It was such a compelling delivery on a topic that just hasn't appeared to be really taken seriously enough by UEFA and other footballing authorities. And and then if you haven't seen that, please go to YouTube and check it out. And then Glenn Kamara also released a statement on Friday via his lawyer, which spelled out the facts 
verbatim, word by word, including the, the, the racist slur and, you know, how it affected him and what he experienced. And <clears throat> once again, another wow moment for me, for the plain and simple messaging of, of what happened and what has to happen as as a result of that as well. Incredibly hard-hitting stuff. And and I, you know, like, like most of us, I'd imagine, talked a lot about this on the weekend with a variety of different people, some who do and don't care about Rangers as much as I do. And... And my overwhelming, overwhelming message of hope for this whole sorry situation is that finally we have a circumstance with the circumstances we're now faced with, with a global sporting icon that is Steven Gerrard at the forefront of this, asking for everyone to stand up and actually do something meaningful about this. That finally we'll take some proper action on the subject of racism in football. Because if it's not now, then when? You know, or is it only when it finally happens to what a more high profile player, someone who plays in a bigger league with a, a you know, a bigger club in inverted commas or a you know, with a with a greater global coverage or something like that? Don't make me laugh, man, you know. And and speaking of laughing, you know, and as on a subject that obviously isn't funny in the slightest, what about Slavia Prague's response? Utterly classless and disgusting. You know, they, they did come out today and say that they will respect the outcome of the investigations and will act if necessary. Oh I sure you will. After four days of being in utter garbage denial, sure you will. We'll see. I truly hope UEFA don't sweep this under the carpet, as, as Stuart says, under the veil of, well, we can't technically prove anything because the guy was cute enough to, what, put his hands over his mouth before he said it? It's time for UEFA to act now and act properly and we have a tremendous opportunity here for a, for a positive cultural shift in football. So please, 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 you if I don't waste it, take it and, and do something meaningful with it. Okay, moving on to start the, the wrap up on a slightly brighter note. You might have noticed last week that the club have put their first major event on sale in conjunction with our NARSA partners Five Stars. And that is an evening with Chris Boyd and special guests being held at the SEC Armadillo on Friday, the 7th of January, 2022. It's a great start and it feels like, you know, the world could actually be returning to normal and having great events with great guests like this certainly gives that optimistic feeling of something to look forward to, I have to say. We'll put the booking details on our blurb that goes out with the communication for this pod, and should you want to book your tickets for this event, please do go ahead. The tickets start, from, from the quick cursory bit of research I did, the tickets start around about £21, £22, and go up to a VIP experience package, which is around about £110, and I'm, I'm fairly sure both tickets or any type of ticket that you buy will be very well worth it and who knows, maybe by then I might be able to take a wee jaunt home to visit my dad Ronnie and, and see the family and take in the event too but great to see that the, the partnership continues to go from strength to strength with five stars and, and hopefully this will be a great event as well. So as we get closer to closing off this week, I am hopeful that we'll have another interview organised and this time it's going to be with Scottish rock band St Phoenix. You will likely know Stevie and Al Dukes from their amazing rendition of Blue Sea of Ibrox that you can go and see on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, type in Blue Sea of Ibrox and I'm fairly sure it'll come up. It's kind of acoustic and very, very soulful and it's, it's absolutely brilliant. And both Stevie and Al are mass, massive Rangers fans and with a lot of very cool stories to tell us about their upbringing, musical influences and the work they've done previously with the club and the work that they have planned in the works also with the club as well. So if we can make it work for this week, we definitely will. I'm really, really looking forward to, to that and, and having the guys on the show and having a wee bit of a different twist to, to some of the range of stuff that we have been doing. And we do have some other interviews planned and lined up over the next couple of weeks. And I know I keep saying it, but we will get the NASA Club History Pods going at some point, around about um, early April, I hope, as well. So look out for that a wee bit later this week, if we can make it happen. If we can't, it won't be for the want of trying. Another wee housekeeping reminder for our pending deadline for any proposed constitutional changes or nominations for electoral positions within the NASA executive. The deadline is April the 5th, which is two weeks today. You can check out our constitution online on the NARSA site, which is narsa.ca forward slash constitution. And the, all the information you will need is, is there as well. As I say, be very, very careful. The deadline is two weeks today. 
and it will be midnight on, on the 5th of April and that will be midnight Eastern Standard Time because that's what time our secretary, that's what time zone I should say, our, our secretary lives in. So two weeks today, please don't waste this opportunity to have your voice heard and, and to have a material influence in the, the future of our great organisation. Like most AGM years, since I've become involved, I do have one or two structural constitutional changes that I'll try and get some support to present and and uh, push get pushed through and, and implement, which will help our continued modernisation and set future executives up for success as we go forward. I'll hopefully be in a position to share a wee bit more about that for everyone that's interested next week, if I can. But remember, two weeks today, go check out the Constitution, see what you have to do. If you need any information about that, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me directly at rangersscc at hotmail.com. That's two S's and two C's. And another wee reminder again, I'll, I'll keep finishing with this every week, that if there is anyone else within the periphery of the club that you would like to hear interviewed, please do let us know and we'll do our very, very best to, to see if we can make that happen. And I actually did have a suggestion from someone that that they would like to hear interviewed and I'll, I'll do my very, very best. It's a, a gigantic heavyweight in, in Rangers circles, so I'm not 100% sure I can make it happen, but I'm certainly going to ask and see. I'm not going to reveal the name just in the off chance that we can make it work and I don't want to put any unnecessary pressure on myself. I just couldn't cope with that. I'm too fragile. So we'll see how that goes over the next wee while and see if we can make it happen. You don't ask, you don't get. So, so thanks very much for that suggestion. So folks, thanks very much once again for taking the time to listen. Please do share this with anyone that you think might be interested in, in listening to it. And for now, take care. All the very best. <laughs>